Hello, I'm Shaza and this is Token on Books and today I'm kind of doing like a five star prediction video but it's not a five star prediction video because it's more like a three star prediction video because basically I'm talking about books that I'm not that excited about which is a bit of a weird video to do. Um, and I'm mostly going to concentrate I think on fiction and I haven't actually went to look at my shelves yet but I'm going to do it in a second. And I guess the point of it is, is because I think a lot of the time the reason why I'm not excited about them is because I forgot why I have them in the first place. I forgot why I've picked them up or I'm kind of doing it in the hope that maybe one of you is like oh no be excited about that book. I read it and thought it was great because that would be really useful. So let me go have a look at my shelves and I'll pick out some books that I'm not excited about and maybe I'll try to rediscover them and try to look at them in the same light as I did whenever I initially got them. Okay, I've chosen five. Um, there are actually more there, which is quite depressing that I've got so many books on my shelves that I'm really not that buzzing to read. Um, and like I said, I've kind of concentrated on fiction, so I don't know if you can see. Can you see? So my top two shelves, which are not really visible, um, are all translated fiction. So even though there's books on there that I'm not like super, super buzzing about, most of them I am. and. If I'm not like super super excited about it, I'm still excited about the fact that they're translated and therefore I kind of am always going to be interested in those. So I'll very rarely get rid of a translated book that I haven't read. Whereas with fiction books, I often get rid of books that I haven't read. And when I say often, this is a very new thing for me over the last year. So actually I don't really get rid of books very often, but I have been a lot more ruthless over the last year or so. Um, getting, and when I say getting rid of, I also mean moving books into my living room and kind of saying that they are the, the books of the house and they no longer belong to me. Um, because I'm just not very good at getting rid of books, but I kind of consider that getting rid of books. Like if I was to move, I don't know why I feel like I need to like <laughs> justify my case. Anyway, I'm talking shite. So I've chosen some books. Um, I'm going to look at them and tell you why. So the first one... I'm just going to pick this one because my opinion may actually slightly be changing. Um, so this is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. It's not really a Sharon book. I don't really read historical fiction, but I have recently been massively into the historical stuff, although I've been reading a lot more sort of non-fiction history books. Um, and I perhaps would like to maybe try to read a fiction one, but it also feels like a very weird time of the year. I don't know why, but historical fiction feels like a more sort of autumn winter thing, as well as chunky books, which I just generally am not a chunky book kind of person. Um, but it kind of slightly piqued my interest recently because she's finally announced the third book in the trilogy that she's writing. Um, so it's due out next year. Um, and because of that, I was kind of like, hmm, maybe I should read them. Um, especially because I have the first one. Um, but I just still don't feel fully excited to read it. And I probably picked this up. I'm pretty certain I got this in a charity shop. And I'm pretty certain my thinking would have been, oh, this one, the Booker Prize. Oh, this is a well-known book. Oh, this is probably going to be quite good because everyone seems to like it. Um, which, when I approach buying books now, none of that really would sway me particularly. Um, you know, maybe, you know, I am kind of interested in prize winners sometimes, but I hold my reservations with them. Whereas I think when I got this, it was very much a, it won a prize, therefore it's going to be good. You still haven't read it though. So you, you didn't know what you were doing. So if you have read it and you think it's amazing, tell me why it's amazing. And maybe I'll read it this year. I probably won't, but you never know. <laughs> Next one I've got here is Histopia. Now I've got a memory that I was super excited about the concept of this. I can't remember what it is anymore but I've got a feeling that it's kind of dystopian. I don't know if that's because um, the title sounds like it might be dystopian because it's Histopia, dystopia. Yeah. Um, so, oh this was on the Man Booker Prize. That's probably why I got this as well. I think I got sent this as well actually. Um, so what's it about? What are you about? So it's definitely right in that the concept of this is what drew me in and it's kind of drawn me in again which is good. So it looks like it's about people that have returned from the Vietnam War and there are um, ways of wiping their memories of their experiences through therapy and drugs and those who are kind of uh, you know can't be helped are left stuck with the trauma so it looks like it's a kind of examination of trauma. So 
it does sound like an interesting concept. I don't know why I don't feel fully hooked in this. I haven't, you know, suddenly been like, oh, I want to absolutely read it this year. But it has reminded me that this is definitely one that I should keep and should get to at least some point in life. I still have a feeling that it's going to be three stars, kind of verging on four. This one, though, I kind of expect it to be four stars. I just... This whole video was supposed to be about it being three stars, though. <coughs> But I'm not excited to read it. I don't feel like inclined to pick it up anytime soon. Apart from the fact that, you know, I got slightly caught up in the buzz of the third one being announced. They're kind of both between three and four stars, therefore, yeah, okay. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Right, the next one, let's move on. The next one is The Kite Runner. So this is obviously, I got this so long ago. I just remember because it was um, by Books for Syria. That must have been... I got this when I very first started working as a bookseller <laughs> and I remember it was because so we had all these books I don't know why I need to tell you this story but we had like a table of books that were part of this um, kind of charity donation so the, the money would go towards um, Syria and I remember it was it was you know my first kind of couple of weeks working there and my manager basically wanted us to kind of sell through them um quickly i think they'd been there for a while and basically he wanted us to sell them so that, in other words recommend them so he brought me over and he asked me to pick two books that um i'm going to recommend to people in other words he'd be paying attention to me selling them to people and this is one of the ones i picked and then I got really freaked out by the, this, this pressure to sell these books. <laughs> so I ended up buying one myself, <laughs> uh, which is so funny to me now. Um, anyway, I bought this book, um, but I was also somewhat interested in it. Although it's one of those books that I know that this is a great book, but I also know that it's one of those books that it just feels like, it feels like it's packaged just to fit like a kind of your standard sort of commercial audience and I, I don't mean that in a it's, it's shit or anything, I just think it's that kind of generic good literary fiction which to me, you know, I'm not as into anymore, I read a lot more kind of obscure stuff now I think um, so sometimes books like this don't really appeal to me um, well-known books don't appeal to me necessarily. I quite enjoy finding things that aren't as well-known now, um, but that's more of a recent thing. I do, however, expect that this is probably going to be pretty good, but I just think I wouldn't buy it now. But just how I feel about all of the books I've shown so far, you know, all of these are books that would I be rushing to buy them these days? No, I wouldn't be. Um, but I know, I know that this is such a well-loved book and perhaps I just need to read it and remind myself that actually, you know, I do quite like a lot of commercial literary fiction um, and I don't just like the really kind of more obscure, less well-known books. Um, but they're just not really my bag these days. Um, but I know, I do know that if I read this I probably would really get into it. Anyway, I think my main reason for not being excited about this is because I just think it's one of those books. It's almost like it's just been... It's like someone going to like a school and being told exactly how um, to to create a book and you know ticking all the boxes. I feel like it ticks all the boxes of what people will want in a book, but therefore it kind of becomes a little bit boring to me. Which I don't know. Maybe I just got these weird perceptions of things, but that's how I feel. Um, but I know quite a lot of you who are watching this have probably read this. Tell me that I'm going to love it, and then maybe I'll read it, and then I will be kicking myself for, for being so insulting. <laughs> okay, the next one is this one, which is The Sea. And it, like, as soon as I pick it up, I'm sort of thinking, oh, The Sea, because I'm quite drawn towards the sea. It's like one of my favorite things and one of the things I massively miss from living at home. Um, and I probably picked this up because it had The Sea in the title and then also another bigger prize winner. A bit of a theme going on here. I think they're all probably on prize shortlists. Um, I don't know what it's about. Let me find out and I'll tell you. Okay, I'm already interested again <laughs> because um, it just sounds like a kind of subject that I'm going to be into. So it's about um, this guy Max, who's an art historian, who has returned to a seaside village that he visited when he was uh, younger and he is escaping from a recent loss and confronting a distant trauma. So it kind of sounds like a sort of thoughtful sort of sad poignant tale and it's featuring the seaside so I should like it. Yet 
I still don't feel super excited to pick it up anytime soon. This could be to do with the fact that I'm on a massive non-fiction binge though. Um, why am I talking about fiction? I don't know. Um, have you read it? Do you like it? Will I like it? Let me know. Final one that I've picked here is The Idiot, which is a bit more of a recent one. Now, there's so many people on Booktube that I respect their opinions and they did videos on this. And I remember watching them and I remember thinking, oh, oh yes, I really want to read this. You know, it kind of got me excited to read it. Yet, I still haven't read it and I kind of, I'm looking at it now thinking, it's going to sit on my shelf for another couple of years and then I'll get rid of it and not read it. So basically the point is all of these books are books that I look at and sort of think they're probably going to be like three star books or the kind of books that I'll give four stars because they are good but I won't completely fall in love with them and basically I want you to tell me I'm wrong and tell me to read them and not get rid of them. Um, I, I, do, I do have intentions of like getting rid of them like today um, or tomorrow um, but it is the kind of thing like in a couple of months or in a year when I'm having another purge they, they probably are the ones that are kind of on there that I could potentially get rid of and again when I say get rid of I mean move to my living room <laughs> and disown them and give them to the house. Oh, fucking hell. Yes so tell me your thoughts, your feelings I just had a massive takeaway and a tub of ice cream was part of that and now I'm feeling really gross. I'll see you again soon, maybe. We'll see. Bye. Oh, wrong way round. Bye. I do have a horrible feeling that it's going to be kind of a good concept but not necessarily well, can I even say the world necessarily, can I even speak?